Welcome everybody to a one hour power yoga practice. Tonight's class will be uploaded to YouTube following this live taping. As well, you can find playlists on my Spotify if you'd like to follow me on there. My name is Tamara YBR and you can find me on YouTube under my name, the same as Facebook, Tamara Maxim. Tonight our practice, rather than focus on a pose, I was going to focus on a body part, which will be the hamstrings. So often that's a really limited, limiting part of the body for this practice, because we use a lot of power in our legs, especially for uh, the sun salutations, for all the standing warrior poses. So let's focus tonight, especially on the hamstrings, the back of the thighs, the largest and for most people, the tightest muscle in the body, muscle group in the body. So uh, think about how that relates to your practice as we move through the poses. And uh, I, tonight we'll draw an intention card. I'll draw an intention card for our practice from this beautiful deck called the Living Peace Cards. And you might have noticed I changed my mat if you practice with me. I got myself a little Mother's Day present and my name means a palm tree. So this, I don't know if you can see it through the camera, but this beautiful mat is from Supported Soul, a company that I absolutely love and a beautiful uh, photograph that was taken by Awesome Day Photography um, of palm trees. And my name means a palm tree. So that's why I chose this mat. So thank you to those two companies, Supported Soul and Awesome Day Photography. Perfect. <laughs> the intention for tonight is release. Letting go does not mean separate and forgotten. You can never unknow someone or unexperience a situation. To release is to find peace with your past. And when it comes to yoga and our large tight muscle groups, to release means to not push yourself, but to allow the opening to happen. And how you can access these releases is through your breath and through patience and giving yourself the gift of time. So there's not an injury I've had, probably that takes longer to heal than a pulled hamstring. I don't know if you've experienced that, maybe knee injuries as well, but they're kind of connected. So. Take it easy tonight, don't push yourself, listen to your body and try to find that beautiful release, that letting go. Let's start tonight standing. So come to the top edge of your mat. You can have blocks for this practice if you like or any other kind of supports that you might need to bring the ground a little closer to you or to help you balance. And let's notice the, the hamstrings right away. So rock back and forth from your toes to your heels a couple times. And see if you can start to lengthen up the back of the leg. So when you rock forward onto your toes, there's a little bit more extension through the front of the thighs. When you rock back to your heel, you would feel the lengthening, the pulling up of the back of the thigh. So just try that forward and back a couple of times. And then start to spread your toes wide. You can even pick up all of your toes and then push them down one at a time from the pinky toe edge to the big toe. Big toes can be touching, heels slightly apart, and make the outer edges of your feet parallel. So we're coming into Tadasana Mountain Pose. And I always think of coming into this pose as a rooting down through the feet, but a pulling up through the crown. But in between, there needs to be lengthening of everything and a pulling up. So imagine pulling up tights over your, your legs and squeeze the buttocks forward, draw the belly in and lift the chest. So you start to feel that contraction around the thighs and especially the back of the thighs, the hamstring. You want to engage there and pull the seat up a little bit. Chest is open, palms can face open and just take a moment here standing tall. Feel the lengthening of your body. And maybe you can think of another intention for yourself for tonight that you'd like to connect with other than the word release. Really in yoga that's about letting go, a parigraha. But also in this release, we want to bring in this idea of ahimsa, non-harming. So not to hurt yourself, to let go. To let go and release to feel good, to feel lighter. And allow the practice to be more accessible. If you'd like, you can dedicate your practice, maybe out to a person, to a place, to a great cause. There are many right now. And we'll float hands to heart center. Anjali Mudra, salute your beautiful inner light, bow your mind in toward the bright light of your heart. We'll open our practice with one beautiful sound of Om. Take a deep clearing breath in through your nose. Full sigh out your mouth, exhale. Inhale for Om, big breath in. Oh. Draw that 
that energy back into the light of your heart. Let it radiate from your heart center in all directions. And come back to your intention and your dedication. Keep your eyes open as you bring your gaze back through center. Release your hands by your side. And we have one hour together, so we'll get going right away. On your inhale breath, reach your arms up wide and toward the sky, or Bahastasana, arch back and feel the front of your thighs lengthening and the back of your thighs contracting. Exhale, fold forward, Uttanasana. And now we feel the hamstrings. They start to turn on. Maybe you need to soften your knees if they're feeling tight. Forehead toward your shins, Uttanasana. Inhale, halfway, lengthen the spine until your back is flat. So palms might come to your shins, your knees, or maybe they can lower in front of your toes with your fingertips touching the mat. Draw the shoulders back. You feel that connection to the back of your thighs. Take one more breath in. See if you can lengthen right up from your heel to the top of your hips. Exhale, Uttanasana, fold. Soften those knees if you need. Inhale, rise up. Pull the legs long as you reach the tailbone down toward your heels, lift up, touch your palms, maybe arch back or bahastasana. Exhale, hands to heart center. So already the hamstrings in the game. Inhale, reach up a little bit faster. Start to bring in the deeper ujjayi breath. Slight constriction of the throat as you exhale. Constriction of the throat again as you inhale. Halfway, look forward. Exhale to fold this half sun salutation. Just warm us up. Ardha Surya Namaskar. Hands to heart center, Surya Namaskar A. Inhale, reach up, arch back. Exhale, fold forward. Halfway lift, lengthen, feel the back of your leg, your hamstrings especially. As you exhale, plant your palms. Step your right and left foot back. Find Uttita Chaturanga Dandasana, high plank. You can always lower your knees. Now draw the belly in. At the same time, press the hips down and see if you can lengthen the back of your legs as much as possible and rock your heels more forward so your shoulders come in front of your wrist creases. Press down into the finger pads. The crown of your head is reaching forward. Take one more inhale breath, lengthen. As you exhale, slowly lower down onto the mat and untuck your toes, press the tops of your feet down. Three cobra poses. Inhale, lift your chest, Pujangasana. You might be lower, a little higher, thighs are pressing down. So you feel the contraction in the back of the thighs, the hamstrings. Exhale to lower. There's always an opposite reaction. When you're stretching one muscle group, the opposite muscle group is contracting. Exhale to lower. Last time, maybe come up a little bit higher, Bhujangasana, Cobra Pose. Exhale to lower. Now tuck your toes, start to strengthen and lengthen your legs, so your kneecaps lift off the mat, shoulders are back, elbows in, press down into your hands, your knees may be off the mat, and now draw your belly in. Super slow motion through Chaturanga, just stop there and see the 90 degree angle of your arms. Take another inhale breath, high plank again. Take one more inhale breath here. And as you exhale, Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. First one of the day, so you might feel the back of your, hamstr uh, back of your thighs, your hamstrings right away. And you can use your heels one at a time, walking out your dog, pedaling your heels down to the mat as you bend your opposite knee and get a little bit more opening, that release into the hamstring, the Achilles tendon, into your hips. Look at your hands, spread your fingertips as wide apart as you can, index finger pointing straight ahead, thumb and index finger rooting down, and now draw the eye of your elbows forward and drop your gaze to your inner thighs. Take an inhale breath, use that to lengthen the back of your legs, and as you exhale, release, press your heels down. Take one more inhale breath, lift your hips, lengthen. Exhale, release, press your heels down. And now come high on your toes, bend your knees a lot, look forward, so back of your legs long, and then bend your knees. Walk, step, or hop forward, nice and light. Halfway lift as you inhale, Ardha Uttanasana, so back of the legs long, stretch the hamstrings. Exhale, fold, Uttanasana. Inhale to rise all the way up. So we'll move a little faster now. We'll add in a different back bend. Exhale, hands to heart center. And you're welcome to hop back if you like. Inhale, arch back. Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, fold forward. Keep your knees soft if your hamstrings are strong. Inhale, lengthen halfway. Look forward. Plant your palms. You can walk, step, or hop back. Left leg and right leg if you're stepping. 
Uttita Chaturanga Dandasana. Keep the back of the legs long, draw the belly in, one more deep inhale. This time you can exhale all the way to your belly or halfway Chaturanga. Take either Cobra or upward facing dog. So press the tops of your feet down, gather up your chest, lift it higher as you lift the thighs up off the mat. So there's a stretch in the front of the legs, a contraction in the back. Stay here for one more breath, roll the chest open, shoulders back. Now come back to high plank pose, roll over the toes, draw the belly in. If you like, one extra chaturanga here, which will be offered throughout the class, and then straight back, downward facing dog. You can skip the extra chaturanga if you like, but I always recommend it. And you can use your knees anytime for support or your block. Take a deep breath in and a long breath out. One more. Lengthen the back of your legs as you lift your hips up. Exhale, press your heels down. Now come high your toes, look forward, walk, step, or hop forward. Halfway lift as you inhale. Release and fold, exhale. Use the ujjayi breath, come all the way up. Big breath to the top, ujjayi breath to exhale, hands to heart center. Step your big toes together to touch if they're not there already. And your inhale breath takes you down low. So you feel that stretch in the back of your thighs, but now you're bending the knees. So you feel a lengthening as you pull your seat back. On your inhale breath, lift the chest up and draw the inner thighs toward each other. So now we take the effort out of the back of the legs and put it in the inner thighs. Scoop the tailbone under. So there's a shortening of the back of the thighs. Take one more inhale breath. As you exhale, lift your hips and fold over your thighs. Stretch the back of your legs. Inhale, lengthen halfway, nice flat back, legs are long. As you exhale, plant your hands, walk, step, or hop back to Chaturanga. Take your back bend. You can go right to the belly if you like. Upward facing dog. There's a shortening of the back of the thighs. Come back to high plank, legs are long. Chaturanga, halfway down. Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward dog. Take a breath in as you pull your hips away from your hands, get nice and long in the spine. Get even longer in the legs as you press your heels down with your exhale. On your inhale breath, lift your right leg all the way up to the sky. As you exhale, bring your right knee to your right upper arm. Keep the left leg long. Inhale, sweep your right leg up. Press out through your heel. Cross to your left side. Give it a twist. Inhale, lift that right leg all the way up. Stack your hip, bend your knee. Lift your knee a little higher. Inhale, square your shoulders. Exhale, bring your knee to your chest. And now press into your palms, look forward. Step your right foot inside of your right thumb. Back heel spins down. Yobhadrasana one, warrior one. Outer right hip is pulling back, left thigh forward. Deepen into your front knee. So we're not so much using the hamstring in this pose, it's more the thigh, inner thighs especially. So outer right hip pulling back, inner left thigh is pressing down right to the inside edge of your heel. Take another big breath in, reach up to the sky. As you exhale, plant your hands down, step your left foot back, lengthen the leg, you're high in the toes. Right foot steps back, maybe float the leg. Chaturanga. Take an inhale breath, lift your heart. Make your way back to Adho Svanasana. You can take the extra Chaturanga. Deep inhale as you exhale, lengthen the back of your thigh. Another deep inhale. Full exhale. Inhale, left leg lifts to the sky. Really press up so you feel the back of your right thigh lengthening. Exhale, left knee to left upper, upper arm. Right leg is straight. Inhale, lift it back up. Cross your left knee to your right upper arm. Twist and cross. Good. Keep your right leg straight. Inhale, reach up. Stack your hip, bend your knee, open it up, square your left shoulder down, lift your knee a little higher, so let the back of your left hamstring shorten. Take one more inhale breath, and as you exhale, bring that knee forward. Keep lifting, draw the belly in, and step your left foot inside of your left thumb. Back heel spins down as you rise up, Virabhadrasana 1. So focusing more on the inner thighs than the back of the thighs here. Outer left hip pulling back. Inner right thigh, pulling down right to the inner heel. 
Take an inhale breath here, reach up a little higher. Exhale, bend a little deeper. So lengthen the front line of the body. Try to curl your tailbone towards your right, uh, left heel. Take another breath in, reach up, bend deeper. One more inhale, lengthen. As you exhale, plant your palms down, step your right toes back so your leg is long. Left leg floats beside it as you exhale to lower, halfway or all the way. Take your back bend, press into the tops of your feet, lift your chest. Make your way back to downward dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Deep inhale, and a long exhale. Step your big toes together to touch, take one more round of breath. See if you can lift the hips away from your wrist creases as you breathe in, and press your heels down to the mat as you exhale. Come high on your toes, bend your knees, look forward as lightly as you can, walk, step or hop. Halfway lift, lengthen back of the thighs, extending. Exhale, fold, full extension. Inhale, chair pose, reach your arms up to the sky as you sit your hips down. So there's a shortening here of the thighs as you curl the tailbone towards your heels. Take an inhale, lean forward. As you exhale, twist to your right. I prefer to tent my fingertips here. This gives a lot of strengthening for the hands. You can turn and look over your right shoulder. Pull your outer left hip and left knee back. See if you can sit a little deeper. And now from here, you can stay. Maybe you open your wings. If you have any other variations, you can take them. Get nice and long in your right arm if it's lifted. Turn and twist, look to the right. Inhale, come back through center, reach your arms to the sky. Curl the tailbone toward your heel, so shorten the hamstring. Inhale, lean forward, exhale, twist to the left. Tent your fingertips, if you like. Pull your outer right hip and right knee back. Create nice strong hands, really helpful for balancing on our hands. You're welcome to stay here as you turn and twist and look to the left, or maybe open your wings. If you're opening that left arm, keep it strong. Reaching up toward the sky, one more breath. Inhale, come back through chair pose. Now it feels good to stretch the hamstrings fully. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen. As you exhale, plant your palms. We'll make our way to Chaturanga. Take a hop or a step. Find your back bend, hops of the feet down. Contraction of the hamstrings, stretch the front of the thighs. Roll over your toes. Extra chaturanga if you like, and downward dog for a full inhale breath and a long exhale. And now we're going to add in an extension of the legs as they come forward. So this is where it can be very limiting if you have tight hamstrings. So keep your knee bent if you need. Take an inhale breath, reach your right arm up, or sorry, right leg up. As you exhale, right knee to right upper arm, stay, or try to extend your right toes forward. Just hold it up here, or you can chaturanga, maybe float the back toes, kundanyasana B. Inhale, reach that right leg back up, press out through your heel. As you exhale, bring your right knee to your left upper arm. Now stay here. If you have kundanyasana A, go for it, or fall in triangle. So press that outer edge of your right foot down and sweep your left arm up and open. Stay here, or gather up the leg. Thigh coming into the hip and lift your leg and pulse for three, two, one. Left hand comes down, press out through your right heel, lift it up. Bring your knee into your, toward your chest. Round the spine a lot, look forward and step your right foot in the middle. Back heel spins down, your toes are slightly forward, front heel to back arch alignment as you rise up deep and into your right knee. Take an inhale breath, lengthen through your fingertips. Bend a little deeper as you exhale. And here you want to gather up the inner thighs in toward each other as you press your feet apart. Take a long inhale breath, wrap your outer right hip under, inner left thigh open, bend deeper. One more, inhale, gaze down your front fingers, knee is tracking outward. On your inhale, flip your right palm up, lower your left hand down, now keep that bend into the right knee. Pull your right hand back as you exhale. Feel free to stay, find a half bind. Maybe you hold your head, wrap the left hand behind you. Maybe both hands connect behind your heart. Wherever you are, press the back of your left knee to straight. Right knee tracking toward your baby toe so you feel like the inner edge of your left hamstring. 
Take another deep inhale breath. Long exhale. Inhale, come back through center warrior two. Find side angle. Start with your right forearm to your right thigh. Sometimes I need to walk my back foot in here. Keep your chest lifted, so no collapse. And keep it lifted and spacious in the upper collarbone. Reach your left arm up to the sky. Stay right here if you want to go further. Hug your inner thighs toward each other, so activate the inner thighs. Right fingertips come down to a block or the, or to the floor. Stay here, or Utita Parvo Konasana. Extended side angle pose. Tuck your outer right hip under, inner left thigh rolling open, pinky finger down, thumb up. Look underneath your left arm. If you have a bind, you can go for it. Take a deep inhale. And a long exhale. And one more full round of breath. And look down to the mat. Come all the way back up. Warrior two. Now hug your inner thighs toward each other. Keep your right foot rooted as you inhale. Peel your left heel off the mat. High crescent lunge. And right away, you need to activate your left leg. Back of the knee pressing up so the hamstring is extended. Take an inhale breath, rock that heel forward. As you exhale, twist to your right, pull your outer right hip back. Try to look to your thumb. Inhale, come back through center, reach your arms up to the sky. As you exhale, twist to your right, right hip pulling back. One more time, inhale, reach up. Exhale, twist to the right, and you're welcome to stay. If you want to go a little deeper, you can take a nice exalted revolved high crescent lunge, or maybe you bring your hands together and maybe you twist a little deeper, taking the left elbow outside the right thigh. And you really need to pull that left leg straight. So press the back of your kneecap up. Take an inhale breath, twist a little deeper. Again, the options, open the wings. Maybe you go for a half bind. Maybe you go for a full bind. Wherever you are, feel the power in your legs. What part of your hamstring do you need to release? Where do you need to tone and strengthen? Take a look over your shoulder if you're twisting. For three, two, power up that left leg. And one, release, look down. Rise all the way back up, reach to the sky so legs are strong. Exhale, plant your hands down, take your vinyasa. You can float your leg if you like. Find your back bend. Make your way back, either chaturanga or straight to downward dog. Take a full inhale breath and a long exhale. One more inhale. Feel the back of the legs lengthening. Maybe you can press your heels down. Gaze towards your inner thighs as you exhale. Next, inhale breath. Lift your left leg to the sky. Remember, you can keep your knees bent here. Bring your left knee to your left upper arm. Stay here or try to extend the leg so the hamstring is limiting. You can chaturanga. Lift the right toes. Inhale, lift it back up. Bring your left knee to your right upper arm. If kundanyasana A is available to you, go for it. Or extend your left leg through. Roll to the inner blade of your right foot. Reach your right arm up and open. Stay here or activate the inner thigh and pull the leg up and pulse. Three, two, one. Good work. Left leg lifts up. Stand through the heel. Bring your knee to your chest. Round on the spine. One more breath. Step through in the center. Back heel spins down. Front heel to back arch alignment. As you're ready, Rise up, find Virabhadrasana two. So there's an inner connection of the thigh, uh, connection of the inner thighs here at the same time, spreading the feet apart. So you're not really feeling this so much in the hamstring, but all the way down the inside of the right leg. And then deeply into the left knee, so you feel this in the left inner thigh. Try to get your knee right over top of your ankle. Make sure you can see your toes, the knees tracking outward. And the thigh one day, parallel to the floor, so inner thighs really working hard here. Take two more deep breaths, reach your fingertips forward and back, gaze down your front hand, give yourself a little bit more release, bend that left knee. One more inhale breath, extend, bend that left knee. Flip your left palm up, lower your right hand down as you inhale, reach up to the sky. As you exhale, pull that left hand back, stay here, find a bind, maybe you cup your head, 
Maybe your right hand comes behind you. Maybe you can get both hands meeting together behind the heart. Left knee bends a lot, lifting up through the chest. Back of the right leg, fully extended. Take a deep inhale and a long exhale. One more, inhale, bend your left knee more. Exhale, there it is. Inhale, back through center. Exhale here. Inhale, lean your left forearm onto your left thigh. You can shorten your stance a little if you like. Reach your right arm up to the sky. And working into the full extension of Tita Parsvokanasana, where you can stay here. You find your stages, maybe use a block. So guide your outer left hip in, inner right thigh rolling open, stay. Or sweep your top arm over your ear. Pinky finger down, thumb up, and look underneath your right arm. So you're pulling right into the hip flexor when you do that, when you tuck the hips under. Feel free to stay here. If you have a bind practice, go for the bind. Keep that rotation of the hips, left hip under, inner right thigh open, two more breaths. Use your ujjayi breath. That's what helps you get the release. Look down, rise back up, warrior two. Now keep that strong connection to the mat of your left foot. On your inhale breath, hug your inner thighs to each other. Peel your back heel off the mat. Try to keep stable in the front foot. Take an inhale, reach your arms to the sky and lengthen and strengthen that back thigh. So right thigh, top of your right thigh fully contracted. There's a shortening of the back of your leg, but your kneecap is pressing up. Take an inhale breath, reach up. Exhale, twist to the left. Look to your back thumb. Two more, inhale, reach up. Exhale, twist to the left. Last one, inhale, reach up. Exhale, twist to the left. Feel free to stay if you wanna take this exalted variation. Left hand to your right thigh, or maybe hands come together at the heart. You can twist a little deeper or hinge and reach that right elbow outside of your left thigh. Tend your fingertips, maybe you open your arms. If you want to go for a half bind or maybe a full bind, a few more deep breaths here. Any variations that you'd like to add on. Keep extending through the back of that right thigh. That's the secret in this pose. Turn and look over your left shoulder. If it's appropriate for your variation, roll your top shoulder open more. Last deep breath. Now keep the strength of your legs. Press down into your feet, back of your right thigh. Lifting up, reach up. Exhale, hands to the mat. Take your vinyasa. Heart open and make your way back. Adho Mukha Svanasana. Deep breath in and a long breath out. Ujjayi breath in and Ujjayi breath out. And step your toes together to touch. We'll do a couple of light hops here, so you can walk your hands a little closer to your feet or feet closer to your hands. Come high on your toes, get your legs as long as you can. Then bend your knees and do a couple of light squats, so hips to heels. And then get the shoulders over the wrists as you come forward, so back of the legs long, like you're pinching yourself forward. And then you can stay there. If you're feeling adventurous, spread your fingertips wide. Get your arms long and strong, just like you'd be standing. Your legs would be strong. Let's try to kick the bum with the heels. Shoulders over the wrists. Let's do four hops. And after the fourth hop, come forward, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Chair pose again. Reach your arms to the sky. And then from here, keep the weight into your left foot. Lift your right leg up and let's cross the flexed right ankle over the left thigh. Hands to your heart center, half chair pose. If you need to, you can stand all the way up and keep the same shape. Make an inhale, lean forward over the shape of your legs and maybe you can hook your elbows and lift your chest. Sit your hips a little deeper. Get a nice hip opening. The hips very connected to the thighs, so if your hips are tight, thighs probably are too. Take another deep inhale. And a long exhale, and then stand up enough to come back to chair pose. Both feet down, weight into the right foot. 
Lift your left leg up, cross your left foot over top of your right thigh. Keep the foot flex, sit down, stretch the hip. So you can't just work with one body part to open up all the connecting parts. So if your left hamstring is tight, your right hip or your right knee probably is challenged as well. Take a deep inhale and a long exhale. Beautiful, come back to chair, reach your arms up to the sky. And now bring your hands to the mat, lengthen the back of your legs, maybe step your toes back a little bit and come high on the toes, spread your fingertips wide. Feel free to stand up onto a block or even put your hands on blocks to make this pose more accessible. This will be crow pose or crane pose. Now crane pose is kind of fun. You can try to keep the arms straight or straighten them after you get into crow. Bend your elbows back if you need for crow pose. Bring the knees to the upper arms. And now lean the weight forward. Keep coming forward, press into the hands, dome the upper spine and contract your hamstrings. So draw the heels in toward your bum. Elbows hugging in if you can, lean forward a lot and dome the upper back and try to straighten your arms and look forward, hold for three, and two. And on your last one, when you're ready, you can shoot back or step back, go through a vinyasa. Meeting in downward facing dog. Take your time. Don't rush. Adho Mukha Svanasana. Deep inhale and a long exhale. And now lift your right leg up to the sky. Big stretch. Reach it up. Bring your right foot all the way through in the center. Back heel spins down. Warrior two. Take a big breath in and a long breath out. And straighten your front leg. Heel toe your back foot in, and now we're going to feel the right hamstring. Inhale, reach forward. You can always soften that knee if you need. And now pivot the arm. So the hips and the hamstring, inner thighs, all working together here. Open up your hips, outer right hip tucking under, inner left thigh open, left fingertips up to the sky, trikonasana. Right hand can be inside or outside of the right calf, maybe onto a block. Take a full inhale breath. And a long exhale. And now left hand to your left hip. Soften your right knee. Let's step forward. Use a block if you need as you lift that left leg up. Press out through your heel and open up the hips. So both of your legs strong and lengthen. Both hamstrings long. Tuck your outer right hip underneath you. Open up your inner left thigh. Look up toward the ceiling. Maybe raise your left arm up. If you want to take a back bend here, you can add in Shavasana if it's in your practice. Wherever you are, be light, try to lift your chest. Maybe you can lift your right hand to your heart. Find your steady balance by drawing the inner thighs toward each other and lengthen your legs for three, two, and one. Both hands come down to the mat as you bend your right knee a lot. You need to do this to release the hamstring. You can plug your outer right hip back, roll your left thigh down, top of the thigh down, and feel that L shape in your legs. Be active as you press out through your left heel. And you're welcome to stay here or soften your right knee enough to bring your right hand to the back of your calf and bring your forehead toward your bent right knee or your shin. And then as you start to straighten the right leg, you feel the hamstring. See if you can lift that left leg higher, forehead toward your right shin. Keep that right knee as soft as you need. Take three deep breaths. Standing splits, Urdhva Prasarita Ekapadasana. And the more you bow your head, the higher the leg will lift for three, and two, and one. Bring your left knee in toward your chest. Slowly start to stand all the way up. Bring your knee with you. Open it out to the side. Cross it over again. Hands to your heart. We'll sit down again. Now here's where we can add in both a balance with our hands and an extension of the right leg. Stay here. You can also bring your hands to blocks. If you're coming into Ekapada Galavasana with me, plant your hands. And then hop your right foot back a little bit. Create some space, bend your elbows, like we do for crow pose, little chaturanga. Cross the shin bone over the elbows, lean forward, 
And now kick your right heel back behind you. Extend that leg strong. Hold here for three, two, one. All the way back in. Come all the way back up to standing. Beautiful work. Warrior three, so right hamstring active. Left thigh rolling down. Virabhadrasana three. And then bring your hands to the mat. Step your left foot all the way back and lower your left knee down. Anjaneyasana. Untuck your toes if you like. Reach your arms up to the sky. Press your hips forward. Take an inhale breath. Stretch the front of your left thigh. As you exhale, bring your hands down to the mat. You might want to have your blocks with you as you pull your hips back and straighten that front leg bow in. Let's do that a couple times. Rock the right foot forward. Bring your arms up to the sky if you like. You can create a little back bend with your cactus arms. Exhale, bring the hands to the blocks or mat. Pull your right leg to straight as you pull the hips. Bow. Hello, hamstring. Inhale, reach up. Maybe a little back bend. And this time we'll hold in Ardha Hana Manasana for a few breaths. So try to get your left hip over top of your knee or forward of your knee by pulling your right heel more toward the front of your mat. But all the while, your right hip is pulling back. So you want to traction that hamstring. Get it as long as you can. Maybe you come forward to full extension of the right hamstring, outer left thigh rolling down. Take an inhale wherever you are and maybe bow. Get a few deep breaths here. If you're up a little higher and you're not feeling supported, you can always bring a block under the top of that right hamstring. You might be up pretty high, it's okay. The release doesn't come right away, especially if this is a really strong muscle for you. Of course, connect it to your knee and your hip and your back. Last round of breath. And slowly, when you're ready, start to make your way out. Use your hands, draw your left knee forward, plant into your right foot, and let's lift the back knee up. From here, three-legged dog. Feel free to stay or open it up, bend your knee, relax your hamstring, it feels really good. Maybe turn your left fingertips out, super slow motion. Flip yourself around, wild thing, or Urdhva Dhanurasana. Press the outer edge of your left foot down. Right heel is lifted. One more breath. And then come all the way back around. Three-legged dog. Take a vinyasa. Find your breath. Ujjayi breath. That's the way to release in this practice. You don't release anything by holding your breath. You only create more tension. Deep inhale. And a long exhale. And inhale. Lift your left leg up. Step your left foot through to the center. Warrior two, back heel spins down, front heel to back or to alignment. It's really just a transition here. Inhale your front leg to straight heel, toe your back foot in. I like a shorter stance for this. Might not be necessary for you if you have longer arms or more open hips. Keep reaching forward, trikonasana. Left hand can be on a block inside or outside of your left shin. Right arm is reaching straight up. Any variations if you took them last time. Try to tuck your outer left hip under, inner right thigh rolling open. So you feel more into the left hamstring here. Try to keep that leg straight. A lot of people need to bend their knee here because of the limitation of the hamstring. If that's happening for you, come up higher. Keep that leg straight, but you don't have to be so low down. That's where it's going to be tougher. A couple more deep breaths. Bringing a lot of love to the back of our thighs today. Right hand onto your right hip. Soften your left knee as you come forward. Bring that block underneath your left hand. So your hand and shoulder are aligned. Step onto your left foot and lengthen the back of your right leg. Make this a wide open hip here. So your left hamstring is really contracted here. Reach your right arm up if you can. Ardha Chandrasana. Your right foot is not sleeping. You're pressing out through your heel. Toes curl towards you and you look up if you like. Or maybe you go for Chapasana. Maybe you can lift your chest up. 
chest up enough to float your left palm. I always find that tricky. As soon as I say that, I fall out. But that's okay, that's why we're doing this. So release not just the muscles, but your ego. For three, two, one. Good, soften your left knee as much as you need to protect your hamstrings so you can bring both hands to the mat. Find standing L shape. So I like to tuck my left thumb into my left hip crease to pull it back and this helps to level the right thigh down. Outer right thigh rolling down. You can stay here. You can even use blocks or soften your knee. And soften your knee a lot just to get the beginning of this. Walk your hands closer to your standing leg and with your knee soft, grab the back of your left calf and this might be it for you. Or maybe you can start to lower the forehead down and pull up on the calf so the leg straightens. And you'll notice when the forehead comes down that the right leg lifts higher. A few deep breaths. So really this is Hanumanasana in the air, standing splits, Urdhva Prasarita Ekha Parasana. And slowly bring your knees together. Look forward, hug the inner thighs as you stand up. Strong through that left leg, you need to keep it lengthened. Bring your right knee up into your chest. And from here, opening up the right knee to the right, cross your flexed ankle. Stay here or sitting down. Working toward Ekapada Galavasana. So you might have to stay up here, that's fine. You're still working towards it. You can use blocks under your hands if you need. I recommend to plant your hands down and then hop your left foot back so you have space because one of the limitations of this pose is the hamstring, but also the space to extend the leg. So get into the hips, lean forward, and then maybe you can extend that left leg back behind you. Contract the thigh, hold here for three, two, one. Come all the way back, stand all the way up, take your knee with you. Virabhadrasana three, super slow motion. Hands come down, step your right foot all the way back, left foot forward, lower your right knee down, Anjanayasana. So release the hips, take an inhale breath here, bend deeply into that left knee, slide your right knee as far back as you can, and you can untuck your toes if you like. Bring your blocks nearby if you feel like you might need them. If you don't have blocks, you can improvise too. Take an inhale, reach up as you exhale, either hands to blocks or the mat. Shift your hips back until your left leg straightens. Press your heel forward, toes curl. Inhale, come forward again. Reach your arms up to the sky. Maybe a little back bend. Exhale. One more time. Inhale. So not particularly like a pose that we're working toward tonight, like I said at the beginning, but more a focus on how to release one particular muscle group, in this case tonight, the hamstring, the back of the thigh. You can stay here or start to wiggle your left heel more forward. Maybe you place a block on any setting under the top of your left thigh. This really helps to get that alignment. Left hip back, right thigh forward. And when you highlight, you bring attention to that one particular muscle group, you can see how intricate the poses are, how really there isn't one pose that just works one muscle group, how connected every part of the body is. But when we can find a release in such a muscle group as the hamstring, back of the thigh can make such a difference in so many poses. So let's take a few more breaths. And some days are different than others. Some days I can go deep into Hanumanasana as I'm doing now and other days I need to stay upright and more in Ardha Hanumanasana half variation. And the release comes from really letting go of this idea that there's an end version of these poses and letting the body release as is natural. Take your last round of breath. 
We'll slowly start to make our way out, hands under the shoulders, bring your right knee un, uh, forward until you can plant your left foot down. Press into your hands, lengthen your right leg. As you inhale, lift your left leg up. You can take a vinyasa or a rest or open it up. Step your hip, bend your knee, feels so good right now. And then from here, turn your right fingertips to the right if you like. Slowly drop your left toes behind you, lift your left heel, inner outer blade of your right foot pressing down, take a big stretch. Wild thing, Urdhva Dhanurasana if you have it. And then flip yourself back around, three-legged dog, take a vinyasa. Downward facing dog, take a full breath in and a long breath out. And from here, we'll hop through to our seat. So you can take a look at me if you have a jump through practice, go for it. Especially when we're working on the hamstrings, it's, it's limiting in this. For many people, try to keep the legs straight. So think of back of the thighs pulling in and see if you can swing your feet all the way forward to the front of your mat. Use your strong core to support you and land on your bum with your feet way out in front. So I'll give it a try and you can take a look. Come in the back. My first jump through on this mat, how exciting. <laughs> that always helps if you smile too. <laughs> so somehow land on your seat. <laughs> so this is the ultimate of hamstring stretches, Pashimottanasana, I think. Both hamstrings at the same time. So if your hamstrings are really tight, you can sit up onto a block Maybe not quite as high as this one or even a little cushion. This gives a little tilt of the pelvis. It's much easier to straighten the back of the legs. So you can try that if you need. If your hamstrings are more open, press out through your heels. Everyone try to press out through your heels, curl your toes towards you. Inhale, lengthen, reach up and fold. Hold on where you can. Inhale, lengthen the chest forward. You can soften your knees if you really need to, especially if you're feeling the hamstrings. And let's fold. We'll hold here for 10 breaths. So get a little bit deeper in this pose. You can use a block under your feet if you like, or a bind of your hands. Try to keep the focus on lengthening the back of your thighs. Last couple breaths. Beautiful, slowly roll yourself up. Bring your left knee in toward your chest. Take your left knee out to the left and angle your right leg out to the right. You're making a V shape with your legs, but your left foot is tucked into your inner thigh, right inner thigh. Take your right hand on your right leg, maybe on top or inside, left hand to your left hip. Maybe out of the view of the camera. Turn your chest open and feel a big stretch as you reach up and over towards your right toes. And maybe you can find the outer edge of your right foot. Maybe both hands come together and look underneath your left arm. Try to roll your outer left sitting bone down. And bring yourself back up, turn towards your right leg, take an inhale, now we'll feel the hamstring. Exhale and fold. You can stay here if you wanna get more into the outer leg. Take your left hand to your outer right foot, pull, pull your right hand out to the right and back behind you and pull yourself across and try turning your toes inward slightly. Rise all the way up. You can scoot a little bit if you want to bring your left knee onto the mat. Left hand back behind you. Roll your inner right foot down. Arch your back. Exhale. Come all the way down. And let's switch our legs. Let's take our right foot to the inner left thigh. 
left arm on the left thigh. So a variation of Janakshirshasana. Take your right hand to your right hip. Open your chest. Stay here or reach your right arm up and over. Feel that side body stretch. Maybe you can find the foot. One or both hands. Try to keep the outer right sitting bone pressing down. Underneath your left, a right shoulder. A couple of breaths. So not just stretching the hamstring all the time, but the inner and outer thighs, back of the knees, the calf, the shin, hip flexor, the glutes, all of it connected. Turn to your left leg, inhale and fold. Try to keep this leg active. Take your right hand on your outer left foot if you like. Left fingertips tend to that wide, fold in. Maybe turn your left toes more inward. Slowly come up, bring your right hand behind you, turn your inner left foot down, sweep your arms back and up. Get some lifting. It's a really nice stretch for the hip flexor, the front of the thigh. Come all the way back down. All right, cross over your ankles. Roll forward onto your hands and knees and we'll take a vinyasa and make our way to downward dog. So from here you can hop back if you like. All the way back. Last little pose here, which is really nice for inner thighs and hamstring. Hop through to a uh, squatting position. Good, malasana. So get into the inner thighs. So we stretch the hamstrings quite a bit in the back of the thighs. Our last little offering here tonight will be TT Bas in a firefly pose. We'll balance on our hands a little bit like crow pose and flying pigeon with the elbows bent, but we'll make a little shelf and try to extend your legs out straight. And for those of you with tight hamstrings, sometimes you can do one leg at a time. It will be a lot more accessible. So let's give it a try. We'll play with that. Make our way down quickly for a little rest, a little back bend and then you can take your Shavasana on your own. So we're almost there. Lift your hips up and turn your toes forward. Feel free to use your blocks under your hands if you like. Now get your shoulders underneath your thighs, bring your hands flat to the mat, make a little shelf and sit your hamstrings onto the shelf. So right away you're pinning the hamstrings down. And from here, maybe try extending one leg out to the right and the other leg out to the right and see how that feels. It's a little bit more accessible one leg at a time. Or sit a little deeper, lean your bum back, but your chest forward, and try taking both of your legs out to the sides. Titi Basana, firefly pose. You can try holding here. You can play a little bit, shifting side to side, or maybe try to bring the toes back, make your way into a crow pose. I'm not quite there yet. But you can play around with that a little bit. Ooh, fall onto your bum. <laughs> if you fall onto your bum, it's not far to go. We'll play around with that a little bit. A few more breaths. One leg at a time. Works for you. Both legs. Hold here. Try to find your balance. Extend your legs. Maybe try flexing your feet. See how that feels. And then when you're ready, you can make your way back. One last vinyasa. <laughs> Not quite there yet. You can go through crow pose if you like. And one last final. Jump through to your seat. So legs are ready for action. Core is ready. And you jump through with straight legs. And you're there on your mat. Let's bring our feet to the mat. Sit up nice and tall. Reach your arms forward. We're getting ready to lay down. Here we go. Slow descent down, use your strong core. If you want to challenge yourself, straighten your legs. Now we get the hamstrings in it again. Slowly lower down. Once you get there, give yourself a big, big, long stretch. Hug your knees into your chest. <laughs> when the dog is tired, <laughs> rock side to side. Bring your feet underneath your knees. Bring your arms beside your body. Make sure your feet are inside the width of your hands. On your inhale breath, 
lift your hips up. So now the stretch of the front of the thighs, contraction or relaxation of the back of the thighs. Press your hips up higher. Use your inner thighs. That's really the action of this pose here in your glutes. Interlace your hands, knuckles moving toward your heels. Welcome to go for Urdhva Dhanurasana if it's in your practice. A couple of deep breaths here. And release your hands, lift up a little higher. And down if you're in Urdhva Dhanurasana, feel free to stay for a couple breaths. Bring your feet out wide, inner knees touch. Place a hand on your belly, one hand on your heart, breathe in. And out. We'll have one more back bend, Urdhva Dhanurasana or a little bridge pose. I'll show Urdhva Dhanurasana so you can repeat what we just did. Or press your hands up to the ceiling. Bring your fingers beside your ears. Hug your elbows up to the sky. Walk your feet and knees pretty close together. Take an inhale breath, lift your hips. So you're going for a little bridge pose. You can interlace your hands under your back. Come on to the crown of your head for Urdhva Dhanurasana if you're pretty new to the practice. Maybe widen your hands and press up. Try to straighten your arms and legs. Take a deep inhale breath. Keep lifting up higher. Exhale breath. Now if you want, walk your right foot more to the center. Bring your left knee in toward your chest and extend your left hamstring. Press up through your heel. And bend your knee again. Put your left foot more in the center. Bring your right knee into your chest. Extend your right hamstring. Let it go. Release. Bring it back in. One more breath. Lower down gently through little bridge pose. Come to the crown. Everybody release. Take your feet wide, inner knees touch. One hand on your heart, one on your belly. Breathe in. And breathe out. Breathe in. And breathe out. Open up your arms in a cactus or T-shape. Let your knees go to the right and left a few times. And then let them come all the way to the right. Pick up your right foot and cross it on the outside of your left thigh or knee. You may even wiggle your left foot more to the left. Turn and gaze to the left shoulder. Breathe in. And breathe out. Breathe in and breathe out. You feel that outer left thigh pulling down. Nice stretch for the IT band. You're really wrapping around the whole thigh tonight. Really to get that release of the hamstring, you have to work all of the surrounding area. Release your right foot. Bring your gaze back through center. Key windshield wiper side to side. And then when you're ready, knees to the left. Cross your left ankle over your outer right knee or thigh. Maybe wiggle your right foot more to the right side so you feel that beautiful stretch down the IT band. Gaze to the right. A few deep breaths. Releasing that top foot, windshield wiper again as you bring your gaze back through center. Even hug your knees into your chest, give yourself a nice big squeeze. If there's any last pose you'd like to do for the last minute or so of the practice, you can. It can be a plow pose, a shoulder stand, or a headstand if you have any of those inversions in your practice, or just something simple like happy baby or Vipurita Karani, reverse waterfall, arms and legs, just hover it hanging in midair. So you decide how you can get the best release for you. And I'll read to you again from our intention card. card. When you're ready, take yourself uh, into Shavasana. Release. Letting go does not mean separate and forgotten. You can never unknow someone or unexperience a situation. To release is to find peace with your past. And in my experience, to find release is to find acceptance, santosha, contentment with wherever you are in the posture. And if you let go, 
have that sense of a parigraha, letting go of whatever it is that you're gripping, everything will come in due time. Thank you for joining me for practice. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. All of the classes I'm recording here on Facebook are also on YouTube. You can find it under my name and in my, uh, in my post for this class. So I hope you find classes there. There are classes for adults and kids now, and I'll keep adding to them every day as long as I have to stay home and teach yoga. From my heart to yours, namaste.